I've always been intrigued by spearfishing and those that can dive to such depths on a single breath. Um, and then I met Cameron. He actually, crazy enough, lives like five minutes from my house. And we met at the boat ramp one day. We got to talking, you know, realized who he was. And uh, we just kind of hit it off, kind of similar personalities. Actually, we first started talking last year. I was getting ready to come over to the Bahamas with my family on a vacation. and I was so intrigued with the, the free diving aspect of things that I kind of wanted to learn the technique. So he taught me the course, the free diving course, and I spent a day out in the water with him. He got me down to over 60 feet on a single breath of, of air and just opens up a whole nother world to me. We're both uh, Yeti ambassadors as well. We spent some time together on some uh, Yeti ambassador trips and just, just every time we get together, we have a great time. We settled on a destination of West End, uh, Grand Bahama. It's the closest destination to where I live out of Stewart Port. And it's a place that we come often. People are always intrigued. And it seems like some remote, isolate destination that's so hard to get to. And until you make a trip or two, it's, it's pretty intimidating. But it's a 78 mile run from Stewart Inlet. If you do it responsibly, you take the right precautions, you go with another boat, or you have an EPIRB and a satellite phone, you know, th these are very doable destinations for your family. And it's a wonderful destination to come with the kids. My kids come here and they just have an absolute blast. There's so much to do to spend time in the water, fishing and diving. It's just a, it's a great place to be. That's the best thing. You're running and it's just deep blue, deep purple water for miles and miles and miles. And then off in the distance you see the water tower um, of West End and it's such a great feeling. All the small islands start to come into focus and you know that you've, you've made your destination, that you're safe, that you're going to be on, on some, some dry land and it's such a good feeling uh, to get here. I started spearfishing down in the Cayman Islands when I was four or five years old, uh, I remember. But we use little hand spears, pole spears, growing up. And it's interesting, the evolution of, you know, your career, your life in spearfishing. You know, you start out with these little basic pole spears. You go to guns and you get these crazy expensive tuna guns that we can hunt wahoo and tunas with. And then you come right back here to the Bahamas and you go back to using just pole spears again, which is really amazing because it's how we got started. And when you're looking just for enough fish for dinner, um, you, you, can, you can get some pretty amazing fish. Um, and it's, it's cool to, you know, have George here and be with him and kind of teach him, you know, what we've learned over the years and have a good time here in the Bahamas. We'll just come out of here at like a 45 and there's a, there's a roll down from like 30 to 40 feet. It's got some big nice rock holes in it. We'll just figure out which way the current's going. We'll just do a nice long drift, and that way we can warm up as we go along it. I got you. How deep is this? It's like 30 to 40. Might be a little bit deeper in the holes. Good thing I'm starting shallow. Yeah, we can start here in nine foot. Sharks are in shallow, I'd rather go deep. Well, knowing you're going to dive with Cameron, it's you know he's going to 
he doesn't he doesn't push you, but you know you're going to want to push yourself to go to that upper limit of, of of your ability. But it's so it's such a calming feeling knowing that you're with Cameron, somebody of his caliber. So Chad Bagwell and I grew up next door neighbors to each other. Um, we've been friends for as long as I can remember. So Chad is a big part of of the show because he's got to document all this. So you got to remember he's on a single breath of air trying to focus on just us, not thinking of anything outside of getting us on film. But for him to be in the right place at the right time without spooking the fish is, is pretty amazing. And that shows you know, his skill as a waterman and as, as, a, as a videographer. Well, the first spot we dove on, uh, the first target that we came across was a hogfish. And this is a prized fish in the Bahamas. Great eating usually found in doable depths, not so deep, especially for maybe somebody that's more of a beginner, which was me. Um, so I felt comfortable. I had done a couple dives down to 35 feet and that's where these fish were. Felt good that I could get down there and take a shot. So, so we're snorkeling around on the surface looking and Cameron finds a hogfish. And it's amazing from the surface how little everything looks down there and how difficult it is to see some fish. Hogfish are like chameleons. They can change their colors and it's amazing. They blend right in with the sea fans. They blend in with the coral. So he has the eye for what to see. We pick out the hogfish that we're gonna target. Cameron, you know, pretty much talks me right through it. You wanna be directly over the fish. You wanna approach the fish slowly. When you approach him, he even said, the thing's gonna turn broadside to you. Wait for him to turn broadside. Take the shot, told me where to hit him. Um, and I blew it. The first two, two times, I, I'm not afraid to say that I missed. And it's just probably a matter of, of, of practicing up, getting used to the pole spear, but I was pretty disappointed. Two shots, two misses. So with a little practice under my belt, I was able to get another shot. And it was a beautiful hogfish. Down to the bottom, took my time, lined the shot up like Cameron said to do. I'm following the fish and he just turns broadside to me. And as soon as he did, I picked the spot where Cam said, took the shot and boom, it, he was done. And that was such a rewarding feeling. Such a great sized hogfish, excellent eating truly a prize uh, for me and I was happy to get to the surface with him. Every situation is different. The timing of your dive, the, uh, the drift with the current, the, the depth you dive, where the fish is going to go, what's it, what is he going to do, when is he going to turn, how far away are you. There's so many different variables in spearfishing that it, it's tough and I remember that you know the first day, the first couple dives with George, he was really really frustrated and it happens on every guided trip. you know. Guys come in, they're really hot, they're fired up, and they can get a little frustrated. So part of what you know we do as friends and as a guide is calm you down, get you know focused on what you can change to do better, and then relaxed enough to actually put it into practice. And sure enough, George made it happen on the very next dive, and from then on it was you know smooth sailing and he he did incredible. It's next level. I mean, to watch Cameron glide through the water, sit down in the bottom, spend a couple minutes underneath the water is, it's fun to watch. There's nothing else to say. It's amazing that he's that peaceful in the water, that he's that calm, that he can spend that kind of time holding his breath. Uh, he makes it look easy. The fish don't stand a chance.
So we're staying at Old Bahama Bay on the western end of Grand Bahama. This is, that's why it gets the name West End. And this is a great destination. You know, wonderful villas. There's homes for rent as well. Um, the restaurant, dock, customs is actually here. So a lot of times this is a port of entry for a lot of the people coming to the Bahamas. Happens to be the place that's going to be where we're going to be staying. And it's a great access point to a lot of wonderful places to fish and dive. So where are we heading today? What's different? <clears throat> Um, every day I just look and see what the wind is doing. Today it's going to lay down, so we're going to just ride it down a ways. And we've got some deep bottom that comes up from like really pretty white sand, and there's these big humps, um, some like big sections of reef. Permit there, there's APs sometimes. Oh, wow. Um, but it, there'll definitely be action. Like if we throw a handful of chum, like stuff will be there. So. All right, cool. And the groupers should come up like as we're doing all that stuff. There should be good big blacks there, so hopefully we get a black when we hop in. Should be good, you know, the tide's coming in, so the water should be really clear. All right, let's get after it. People that are out fishing that have never gotten in the water, it, it's got to blow their minds the first time they get in the water and see what's going on down there. And you know, we were fishing for yellowtails yesterday, and I was I, I couldn't take it. I needed to get in the water because I knew what good fish were down there. Because Chad immediately you know jumped in when we got there is to find out what the drift was. He's like, oh, there's there's a grouper, there's another one. Okay, there's four good groupers here. And George and I were like, come on, let's go, let's get in the water. <laughs> So it's good to have that, that buddy that you can trust to get in the water and, and, and go look around for you. George, if and when you're ready, the way to do this with this kind of like situation with the sharks and stuff, is I go down and shoot and you hold onto the line. As soon as I shoot, you start pulling like hell. <laughs> so the practice is over. Shallow water dives are apparently are over and we have to go out to the deeper stuff. Um, 60, 70, 80 feet of water is what we're talking about now. And it's crazy. If you didn't look at the Raymarine depth screen to know how deep it was, when you jumped in you wouldn't know. Until you look down at the bottom and the sharks on swimming on the bottom look like little, little toys. They're, they're just tiny down there. A little more intimidating, a little more nervous, I'm not gonna lie. I uh, dropped down, I think I went down to maybe 55 the first time, and you feel that pressure on your body. Um, it's a little harder to, to remain calm, but to know that you have great guys like Chad and Cameron looking over your shoulder, it makes it a lot easier. Cameron pointed out a yellow mouth to me and got very excited. This is the best eating fish, according to Cameron, in the Bahamas. This is a prize. He says, this is my opportunity. So I breathe up, I try to relax. I know there's a lot of pressure on me. I dive down, get down to the bottom. He turns broadside to me. I take the shot and, and the spear just runs right through him. Just right over his back, poke right through him, pulls right off the spear and uh, I miss the fish. But I get back to the surface and I immediately hear Cameron saying, give me the spear, give me the spear. And that's the whole thing, apparently. You work as partners, you work as team, one guy up, one guy down, and if you miss a fish, a lot of times if you follow that fish, once he's injured, he's a lot easier to get. We could see that yellow mouth now swimming on top of the reef. There's no way that that yellow mouth grouper was gonna get away from Cameron. The yellow mouth grouper is a relatively small grouper. We shot the world record here that was only, I think, 11 pounds a couple years ago. But those fish taste so good. They're a deep water fish that eats really rich um, you know, crabs and shrimp and, and minnows. Um, this one had really beautiful white stripes on it and they're just one of my favorite fish to hunt over here because you might only see one in a couple of days and it, it makes the challenge even greater trying to find one.
Ray Marine is the electronics company that I count on. Not only am I a show host, I'm also a full-time fishing guide. And having easy to use, dependable electronics is a must. There's a lot of good electronics companies out there, but what makes Ray Marine great is their ease of use and the ability to customize the screens to a layout that suits you. I run two multifunction displays and that affords me the ability to monitor multiple things at once. I traditionally like to run chirp and side vision. This affords me the ability to see what's off to the side. Extremely useful when we're snook fishing inshore with a lot of structure. I can see these fish laying 50, 100, 150 feet off to the side of the boat. Another thing that I truly love on a small boat is the ability to have serious weather on my Ray Marine. I can monitor what's going on regardless of how far offshore I am. I can see these thunderstorms that pop up, monitor wind, lightning. It really keeps you safe on the water. Red Marine has a product to meet all your electronics needs, so check out your local retailer. Black grouper are the biggest of the groupers that we hunt over here and one of the best eating as well. They are usually close enough to a cave that they can get there within a couple of, of kicks and they're aggressive enough that they'll eat almost anything on the reef. We found everything from lobsters to snappers and other small groupers in their stomachs. So hunting them is, is, a, is a balance in being sneaky and also, you know, making sure you get between them and where they want to go because they're powerful enough if you don't get them before they go in there they're just going to break all your gear as they go in there and that's why fishermen probably break so many of them off and never know what it is because as soon as they eat that bait they just rush in the hole and break everything. My time was up. It was time for the big boys to play. We swam out a little deeper. Now we're talking of depths of 75, 80 feet of water that these guys go down, can hang out down on the bottom like it's nothing. It was, it was fun to watch on the surface. Um, I was acting as a safety diver for both guys. And the ability for them to hunt, to stalk prey, to document it, to film it down at that depth, really, I mean, another level. Spearfishing is a perfect combination of fishing and hunting because you have to bring hunting techniques and fishing techniques and put them together and mesh them. And then you've got to hold your breath on top of that. So for people that have done every fishing trip, every hunting trip, this is the perfect match of everything with unlimited challenges, no matter where you go in the world. And it's, it's such a great sport in that respect. And that's why you see so many people that, you know, hunt and fish end up diving and it gives them a, a greater respect and a greater appreciation for the other aspects, you know, fishing and hunting individually, and it makes you better at all of them. When you're mid-water call and pulled back away from them, seeing them rise out of those depths, 80 feet of water, and then just the vastness of the water that surrounds them, it's, it's awe-inspiring. It's, it's it's, I can't even describe it to you, how, how picturesque, how beautiful it was. There's just words that won't come to me but that's the thought in my mind. Those are the pictures that will live with me forever. Perfect size black grouper there. 
That's what we were looking for right there. Like perfect size black. <laughs> yes. Stoned him right in the head. What you want. And like I said, with the sharks around, that's how you gotta shoot them. You know? What a fish. Oh, thanks for backing me up, man. Yeah, man. It's teamwork there. I've traveled all over the world, been to more than 80 countries, and we have one of the most incredible places in the world right here in our backyard with an amazing fishery, incredible people, beautiful islands, beautiful water, and they're nice enough to share it with us. As Americans traveling, it's good to see people be very respectful of the resources here and just really enjoy the islands. Cameron's no joke, and that is probably one of the coolest things about this job in this show is to be able to spend the time with some of the best in their business. And Cameron is right there. Multiple world record holder, very well recognized, very well respected in the industry. And to have that time with him is priceless. But I truly respect his capabilities and it's, a, it's an experience that I'll never forget to be able to spend this time on land and underwater with Cameron Kirkconnell.